sand. It's coarse and rough and irritating and it gets everywhere. And it's magnetic. Walking on the beaches in Indiana Dunes National Park, you might notice that the sand looks a little strange. The grains might be black or have little flecks of red. Those aren't sand grains. Those are actually a mineral called magnetite, a naturally occurring mineral in the Earth's crust that is, as you guessed it, magnetic. But how'd that magnetite get here on the beaches in Indiana Dunes? And what makes it magnetic? Actually, how do magnetic fields work in the first place? Over the last half million years, there have been at least five major ice ages. Each time the planet's temperature drops, the polar ice caps expand. When they do, that ice scrapes away at the surface, breaking up rocks and minerals. Since the Great Lakes were kind of the end of the line on the glacial expansion train, a lot of those sediments those glaciers picked up were deposited right here at the bottom of the lakes. Over time, the wind and the waves have washed those teeny tiny magnets up on shore. But that still doesn't answer the question of why magnetite is, well, magnetic. Let's start with atoms, which make up anything in our universe that has matter. Atoms are made up of positively charged protons in its nucleus with the same number of negatively charged electrons orbiting around it. Now, as long as the balance between protons and electrons remains the same, an atom will have no charge or will remain neutral. But when atoms start swapping electrons, that balance gets tipped. Atoms with unequal numbers of protons and electrons have a charge or become ions. Now, there's additional physics taking place here, like where and how many electrons are orbiting a nucleus and why and how many electrons get shared in a chemical bond. But what's important to understand in the case of magnetite is that iron gives oxygen a couple of electrons, turning iron into a positive ion and oxygen into a negative ion. When a metal donates electrons to a nonmetal, we call this an ionic bond. So named because the atoms involved in said chemical bond have a charge or have become ionized. In physics, and so often in love, opposites attract. And so these ions become attracted to one another. But they do so in a way that arranges themselves in a very specific pattern. We call this pattern a crystal. And it's a highly ordered structure with iron and oxygen ions forming a regular pattern extending in all directions. What we get is a three-dimensional matrix of aligned charged particles. And a magnet is born, right? Not quite. Electrons have a property called spin. Now they don't technically spin. Subatomic particles behave in all sorts of weird ways that would be impossible in our daily lives. So instead of thinking of electrons as spinning around like a bunch of little tops or dreidels or ballerinas, instead think of them as giving off the effect of spinning. In things that are not magnetic, the order and orientation of the spin of the electrons is random. But sometimes, like when cobalt, nickel, or iron are ionically bonded with oxygen, those metals cause all the electrons within a crystal structure to align their spin in the same direction. We call this special property ferromagnetism, and it's what causes this iron oxide to create a magnetic field. A magnetic field is a type of force field given off by an electric current or magnet that causes electrically charged particles to move in a circle. Now you probably know from playing with magnets that they have a north and south pole. You probably also know that when you try to put the same pole of two magnets together, they will repel each other, while opposite poles of a magnet will attract. That's because those charges want to go with the flow of the magnetic field. It's what allows you to have fun making magnets defy gravity or arranging the magnets on your refrigerator in fun or inappropriate patterns. But it's also what forces those grains of magnetite to be attracted to other magnets. And it's not just a cool party trick. Sure, you can come out to the beach and collect grains of magnetite and undoubtedly friends in the process. But once you have said grains, they can be used for all sorts of applications. Magnetite's been used to make special types of steels, um, magnetic liquids and MRI machines, even water purification processes. They've even used magnetite to clean up toxic waste sites of heavy metals. Not bad for a little mineral. 
I mean, could you imagine Magneto on this beach? He'd be collecting all sorts of grains of magnetite and be like, ah, magnetic sand. And he'd build a, actually probably, actually probably be really cool. He'd probably build a really cool magnetite castle. You're gonna have to see what Michael Fassbender's up to. Now, of course, there's a lot more to magnetism and electromagnetism, but that's another video. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna go back to playing with magnetic sand. Rear. Want to learn more about our national parks? Then hit that subscribe button, friend. Stay up to date and catch bonus features by following us on Instagram at Outsider.